Well, it's Sunday morning. I gotta do a little walk around in my G506 before I take it off the trailer. Show you a few issues with it and a little more about it. As you can see, it had a snow plow added. Uh, they did a nice job building the snow plow frame. You can see under here, really nice supports they built, made it real professional looking. My first intent was to take the snow plow off of it. I think I'm still going to do that, but I know I'll still leave the mounds on the frame just in case I'd put it back on at some point. Here, you can see the link for the shock absorber is missing. I think they're missing on almost all four corners, which doesn't really concern me. I wouldn't even worry about having those anyway. But I just thought I'd show you that they're missing. It has a couple of nice toolboxes on the side. Kind of unusual the way they open, but they're there. The tires are heavily weather checked, which doesn't bother me. I'm not going to be driving it on the road. But someone must have replaced all six, as they do have the duals at one time with new ones, because the tread is very deep on them. I'm sure they never got any road miles after those tires were installed. You can see it has a 12 foot bed on it, a very long bed, uh, overhanging the back a lot. For now, I'm at least just going to let it just the way it is. I'll eventually put wood on it so I can oh, park my little Cat 22 or something on the back of it for display or something like that. Issues that does have to be addressed. As you can see, this U-bolt on your leaf spring is broke. So that does have to be addressed. The gas tank, if you saw on the first video it did on, I used a little auxiliary gas tank. But I, I'm thinking this gas tank may be usable. As you can see, it was gal it's a galvanized tank. So we'll see if, how clean it looks on the inside. I'll remove the tank and take this filler hose off so I can see inside the tank, see what it looks like on the inside. As I'm saying though, I'm hoping it might may be usable as it is. This snow plow lift is kind of interesting. Apparently it's electric to raise it. And to low, I would guess to lower it, it has this a mechanical mechanism which I'm sure controls the valve in the hydraulic cylinder for lowering it. I want to unload it. I'm going to attempt starting it just by hooking the battery up and climbing in it and see how it starts without pouring any gas in the carburetor. See if it'll start.
pretty good. Now I'm going to show you some other things about it. Well, I'm glad I wasn't here in the summertime trying to get it. That wouldn't have been fun. We don't charge extra for those when you buy this old stuff. You can see all the data plates. I can't really read any of them. If I carefully clean on them, eventually I'll see if I can make anything out. I don't think that's the factory rear view mirror. One big plus is the glass. All the glass is in it. I'm sure that's why the raccoons weren't inside tearing it all apart. And the windshields are a little smoky and bubbled around the edge, but they're good for what I want. At least they aren't broke or shattered. This is the handle for apparently the valve for lowering the snowplow. I think this may be the button to raise the snowplow to run the electric over hydraulic pump. There's a solenoid for it wired in underneath the hood. Interesting door handle. <laughs> the seat is in amazingly good condition. I would imagine that's been recovered. I can't believe that's original. But then again, you never know, as long as no animals got in it. And the instrument panel is all, all the gauges, the glass is good on all of them. And if you could, if you could believe the odometer, it only shows 6,422 miles. Well, I don't believe that. Uh, the seat would show it to be that. But judging from the paint burn worn off the door, Someone has gotten in and out of this thing a lot of times. Apparently, I was brushing against the door wearing the paint off. The little dimples on the brake and clutch pedal. The anti-skid dimples on it are, are still in quite good condition. I've seen on some old trucks where any of the anti-skid markings on the brake and clutch pedals are completely worn off. But these are actually quite good yet. So that would indicate less usage. I've noticed that these axle cap screws should certainly aren't original and some of them, and they're loose, pretty loose. So I don't know what the issue is there. And the other side is the same. There are loose ones partly backed out. So that'll take a little investigation. It also came with a come along with no cable on it. You can see I got the lug nut wrench. I already had one or two of those, but now I got another one. Now these look like cap screws for like the ones in the rear axle. So someone must have been doing something with rear axles. Glove box door is intact and I see inside the glove box is the other windshield wiper motor. One of them's in, the other one's in the glove box. And the two shift levers for the transfer case, I guess one is for high and low range and the other one's probably take it in and out of four wheel drive. I have no idea which one does what. And the parking brake handle I'm certain is an original because I've never seen an over center one like that in any of the pictures. And you can even see here the snip marks where they had cut out the floor somewhat to make it fit. Also I like the little added safety spring for the reverse lockout lever. You see they added a little spring to help keep the lever in position. Now, now under the hood, you can see they add an inline filter, uh, and I actually don't think it's the original engine. And the first giveaway is the valve cover, because any of them I've seen would have had a valve cover. Any pictures of the old Chevy engines, and I have one, would have had studs in the middle of the valve cover to hold it down. And also, there's a manufactured radiator shroud, which... I don't think it's original because it's galvanized and cut out there with a torch a little bit. I mean, they did a nice job, but I'm thinking that they built that, changed the engines and built that fan. Although shot. it is a big enough engine that it has remote partial flow oil filter instead of the full flow oil filter mounted underneath like later engines. There's the solenoid for the snow plow. Let's check the radiator, see if the coolant level stayed up. Uh, the coolant level went down 
some, but it was leaking a little bit yesterday. And as far as the color, this appears to be the original color with that over the top of the blue and the yellow over the top of that, it seems to be. So I don't know if it was originally blue. Maybe some people out there who know these better can shed some light on that. So I guess that's about it. On the other side of the cab, I don't see any telltale signs of blue. So I don't know, you know, that's kind of a mystery. And now I'm going to try pushing on the brake pedal. I'd be amazed if there was any kind of uh, resistance, other than if it's rusted tight. But I didn't want to touch it just in case there was resistance. If it would have pushed the brake shoes out and they got stuck, then it wouldn't have wanted to roll. So I haven't touched it until now. So here goes the brake pedal. Yeah, I think it's just rusted tight. So there it is, my Chevy G506. And thanks once again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.